I'm here to tell you that the pipeline to export your layers out of ZBrush and into Substance Painter, the way that I had described it in a previous video on this channel here, is now actually a lot simpler. All of that is because of the fine work done by Florian Jonas. He wears quite a lot of hats, but certainly one of the hats that he wears is a technical artist hat. And he has seen that video that I had posted on exporting layers out of ZBrush so that they can be used in something like Substance Painter. And there is a particular point in that workflow that involves within ZBrush to go through all of the layers that you want to export out as a displacement map, turn them on and off and export them and go through different subdivision levels. And there's all of these different manipulations that you need to do to really get the workflow to work properly. And Florian has taken a look at that and he actually realized that, hey, we could actually automate all of those little steps that are needed to export the layers out of ZBrush. And so him and I, we have uh, collaborated to create a little plugin that will make the export of all of your layers a lot easier and a lot more automated. So now you may actually be thinking about this and you're like, oh my God, I'll have to pay some cash for this. This is gonna be, I'm gonna have to spend a few dollars for this. I'm not gonna get this for free. Well, actually, no. You know what, Florian and myself, we kind of decided that this was going to be helpful for a lot of you. And therefore we have decided to release this particular plugin completely for free. You don't have to spend any cash for it. And you can actually get the plugin itself from outgang.studio on our shop page. Go and grab the plugin. It's completely free. It's not gonna cost you a dime. And it is our pleasure to make this available for all of you there. Don't forget at the same time to check out Florian's Art station page and he has also a, a gum road don't forget to go and check that out as well if you want to see more what he is doing there i want to give you a very quick demonstration of how to use it to export out all of your layers out of something like zbrush and how simple now the process is to take all of that layer data from ZBrush and import that into something like Substance Painter there. So let's go through the whole pipeline from beginning to end. If you just acquired the plugin now and you are trying it out, this will serve as a sort of tutorial for you as to how to use it. So let's get started. As you can see, this is what is included within that package there for the plugin. And to install the plugin, it's actually very simple. We simply have to take this particular folder here and this file right here, and you simply have to drag and drop them within your ZBrush installation folder, Z startup, and Z plugs 64 folder. You simply have to drop that data in there. And once that data is in there and you go to ZBrush, once you will start ZBrush, you will be able to find the plugin under Z plugin and you will simply find this particular plugin here called Layers to Displacement. And just to make my life easier here, I am going to dock the Z plugin menu to the left there so that we can take a look at the plugin as we use it. Now, one thing we quickly realized while we were testing and developing this particular plugin was that sometimes we have layers that we have, let's say on the head within ZBrush, that we use just to uh, play around, let's say, and change the morphology of a head. And so the solution that we came up with was to add an underscore on the front of a layer name, as I am right about to do here. So I'm gonna add an underscore before V3 and before V2. And what it's going to do is that it's simply gonna flag these layers as layers that will not be exported out as an individual displacement map, but rather the data from these layers will be embedded within the base data of the tool, if that makes any sense. There is here a little button that you can turn on and off if you don't necessarily like this particular functionality. It's also worth to mention very quickly that any layers that are completely hidden from the layer stack within ZBrush simply won't be exported at all. The plugin will completely ignore those hidden layers. This particular button will make it so that the exported displacement map name will match the layer name. 
This is probably a functionality that you want to turn off if you haven't taken the time to properly name your layers. And this particular button here will simply activate what we consider to be some of the better default options to use on your displacement map export settings. You can always turn this off and go within your displacement map menu down here, and you can tweak these settings to however you want them to be if you don't want to use the auto settings. For the texture resolution, I personally like to keep it as high as possible because I want to reduce the amount of data loss that may happen by converting all of these layers within textures. So I like to use the biggest option that we possibly can have, but you can definitely tweak this value as much as you want. This particular button here will allow you to select the folder where you will be exporting all of the displacement map data. So let me just go it up here and uh, create uh, yet another test folder for this. Let's call it uh, export uh, live test. Why not? Let's put that in there, select that folder here. And that's it. That's pretty much all you have to do. The last thing that you have to do before you can press the button to export your layers is to simply select the subdivision level that you would like to bake your displacement map as. So what that means is that if I'm going to use this particular head to be textured afterwards in something like Substance Painter there, and I know that I want to use the subdivision 2 level of the head within Substance Painter to be textured, I want to put my subdivision level here to 2 before I press export. And what's going to happen is that we will then export the, the displacement data for all of the data that is uh, for the subdivision levels that are above level 2 there. So it's very important that you set yourself to the subdivision level that you will use afterward in whichever program you are throwing this data into afterward. But that's pretty much it. That's the only thing that we have to do. We are now ready to export all of our layers as individual displacement maps. As you can see, once the export is completed, the plugin will reactivate all of the layers that you had so that you can continue working exactly where you left it off. It's really as simple as that. Now let's open our export folder and let's take a look at the data that's in there to see what it looks like. As you can see, all this data has been exported out as 32-bit TIFF files that are very high quality. And if you simply want to use this data as is in whichever engine or software that you want, it is ready to be used. But if your goal is to use this data and import all of your layers from ZBrush into something like Substance Painter, before we can import all of these within Substance Painter, we need to convert our data. We need to create what I call the difference map for all of these layers that you have. Because by default, all of these displacement layer data, they all have both the layer information in there, and they also have the base data information in there. And what we want to do is to simply separate out the layer information from the base data information. We want to have these two things to be completely separate there. So to convert all of these displacement maps into their corresponding difference maps that can afterward be used in Substance Painter, I have created a very nifty little Substance Archive file that you can use for this particular purpose. This tool to convert your displacement maps into their corresponding difference maps is a .sbsr file. Now, a .sbsr file is a Substance Archive file. And to be able to use one of these, you need to have installed on your computer a program called Substance Player. Now, you don't have to worry. Substance Player is a free program that is freely available for everyone, so you don't have to pay cash to access it. And if you simply want to download it, you can find Substance Player by simply Googling it. It's going to take you to a download page where you can download Substance Player. 
And afterward, you will be able to freely use any SBSR files that people can throw your way, including this one here. So it's freely available. Go and grab it because it is necessary if you want to convert your displacement maps into different maps to be used within Substance Painter afterward. Let me go ahead here and launch this SBSR file. And as you can see, the interface of it is actually very simple. And the workflow is also very simple. Still, you simply have to select the resolution of textures that you have exported out as displacement maps. In our case, those would be 8K textures. And then where it says input A and input B, for input A, go in there and select your base map that has been exported out of ZBrush. So take that, open, and for your input B, select the first layer that you want to convert as a difference map. So in this case here, let's go for our bumps.tiff texture. Once that's in there, that's it. You really don't have anything else to do but to simply export this out as a bitmap. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's browse to the folder that we are working in right now. And here, I'll simply call it bumps difference. For format, let's make sure to use this as a TIFF so that we keep that 32-bit data and we can simply export it. Once I'm done with the first one, I can do it with the second one. Let's say in this case here would be our chicken skin. Export as bitmap. Let's call it chicken skin difference. Export. Close this. Select our third layer and so on and so forth. So I won't do the rest of them live, of course, because that would be boring for you to watch. And that's it. That's all you have to do. now. To load this data within Substance Painter, including the head, let me first export the head out of ZBrush at the same subdivision level that we have used to export our layers, of course. So here we are in Substance Painter. Let's go ahead here to File and let's create a new scene. Let's select in there our head that we have exported out of ZBrush as an OBJ. And at the bottom here, where it says Import Mesh Normal Maps and Baked Maps, let's click on Add. Let's select all of the difference maps that were converted using Substance Player. And let's also add to it the base map that was one of the straight exports out of ZBrush. Click OK. So here we are. We have our head that is within our Substance Painter file. In our Layer tab, let's simply create a new Fill Layer. We can get rid of the default layer one that is there at the same time. Within this Fill Layer, let's simply switch the color here a little bit to make this a bit darker. And why not play with the roughness here a little bit at the same time? Let's now scroll down our fill layer within our properties tab. And where it says height, let's make sure to select the base map that we have imported. And this will give us all of the data that was part of the base data from ZBrush. While I'm here, let me change the camera FOV. And now, let's start importing all of our layers. Let's create a new fill layer. And in here, let's first make sure that we disable from this fill layer all of the channels other than the height information channel. Let's go to height, and let's in here load the first of the difference maps that we have exported out. Now, this particular layer happens to be very subtle. Let me go here 
to the Height Texture tab. And this particular fill layer here, let's set it to Overlay. So click on the little Linear Dodge button that is there and select Overlay from the pop-up menu that will be there. Unfortunately, it is not on screen right now, but you can see here that I have set this to Overlay. And as you can see, as I'm zooming in and looking at the data that is over my surface there, you can see all of this banding that is visible here. And that is because by default, the height channel in Substance Painter is set to 16-bit by default. And that's too low as a bit rate for us. We really want this to be set to 32-bit. So let's go to our texture set settings and let's scroll down until we get to the height little box that is right here. And what it says, L16F, simply switch that over to linear 32 floating point. And as you can see, now our surface is nice and smooth there. Let's go back to layers. And now this layer here, let's simply rename it to bumps. Let's control C, control V it. And I will do that until I have loaded every layer that was exported out of ZBrush here. So this is our chicken skin. Let's also not forget to rename our fill layer here to base. That's going to be useful. So chicken skin here, loading the chicken skin difference texture, control C, control V it. In height here, select our now third layer, our comedones. And as you can see, every time I'm doing that, I am adding that layer information to my model right here. And there you go, I'm done. So all of the layers that I had within ZBrush, all of them here, all of this is now loaded in Substance Painter. Perhaps one of the last things I can do is to simply group all of these within one folder. And let's call these layers. And I'm gonna add everything in there, but the base layer And now I can easily turn all of these layers on and off. If I decide to change one of these layers within ZBrush, I decide to tweak the information that is in there, I can simply re-export that layer out of ZBrush, re-import it in here and simply swap the displacement maps, or I can continue working on the layer information straight within Substance Painter because that is now what is available to us as a workflow there. Don't forget that you can, of course, lower the intensity of some of these layers. If you find that, for example, that the pores that I have in this particular zone are too strong, I can easily turn them off. If I want them to be even stronger, the easiest way to do really is to simply duplicate the layer there. And now I have even stronger skin pores over the cheeks. And of course, I can reduce the opacity of this if I really want to have very fine control over the intensity of these particular skin pores. And that is the workflow to export your layer information from ZBrush within Substance Painter there. So go to outgang.studio to grab the plugin. And once again, I want to thank very profusely Florian Jonas for putting all of this together and making all of this available for all of us. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, everyone, take care.